Macho Mandalorian is here. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, Django Fett here, Honey Down Games, comics, TV shows, movies, and more. And you guys voted for this game on Facebook. And this is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. I gotta admit, as a kid, I played this with a friend as he owned the game and I didn't and played it for a little bit and liked it. I didn't, you know, love it and now after two decades, I finally got my hands on it. Digitally speaking, of course. And I haven't had this much fun in a Star Wars game in a while. This is a true gem of a game that deserves all the praise. And I truly see it now. Now before I go in full gush mode, let me explain what Shadows of the Empire is. Now the video game is inspired by the book which came out in 1996 and written by Steve Perry and tells the story that took place between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi films. So it's in between. Now I'm not going to say anything more about this amazing book, but go buy this book. It's dirt cheap and super inexpensive online, and it's freaking epic. Go read it right now. Now, the video game came out for the N64 and also came out in the same year as the book, uh, eventually going on PC the next year and on GOG this year, which is the version I am playing. It's freaking five to six bucks on GOG, guys. That's a great deal. Now the video game focuses on the events of the book, but mainly on a hotshot mercenary named Dash Rendon, who is a badass that gives Kyle Katarn a run for his money. Before he became a Jedi Master, that is. Now in the game you progress in varied levels, shooting and blasting your way to get the sweet rebel paycheck. It's solely a single player adventure game that you can switch from third person to first person fairly easily. I would recommend third person in all honesty. Before I get into any of the game features, let's talk about the options. When you start the game, you are greeted with a Windows to customize your options like the difficulty, uh, small things like fog and cutscenes. Cutscenes come fixed by the way, so there's no way to change it, uh, the resolution that is. To change the resolution, especially for an old game like this, you can change the resolution to 1080p and even 4K, which is phenomenal for an older game. Now, sure, it doesn't look like it's a great looking game, but to have those options is pretty freaking awesome. You don't see many of those older games have those options. Plus, this game runs at a crisp 60 frames per second on the PC, and PC Master Race, bitches! The game has never looked and felt better than it is on the PC. And if you complain about the graphics, here's what I have to say. It's a goddamn game that came out 20 years ago. I'll always say gameplay over graphics. And the gameplay is what carries the game. Unlike EA's battle shit. Now as great as these options are, the save system is kind of screwed up. I first started up a game two weeks ago and played through it with no problem. Thinking there is an autosave, and then a week later, I came back to it, and my save is there, but it didn't save properly, and I ended up starting the game all over again, and I was close to the end. That kind of pissed me off. Now, I did end up beating the game again, and it really didn't take that much time to beat it, so it only took me like two to five hours to beat again, so it's pretty short, but at five dollars, it's a great value. Now I mentioned that each level is varied and yes they are. Each is different than the last. One level you'll be in Hoth flying and shooting up AT-ATs then the next level you'll be on the ground shooting up Imperials with your trusty blaster. You have to follow a certain amount of objectives to pass the level uh, and then if you collect these rebel icons scattered in each level you unlock more lives to use uh, for the game so if you die don't worry you don't have to start all over again which is I mean it's a drag over time but you can continue from where you left off which is a great thing the gameplay is just very fluid and really fun the fun factor is extremely high with this game replayability wise not so much but if you go through medium difficulty and collect all of the rebel icons you will unlock a secret ending which is pretty great it's a really great ending I so wish that was canon in the expanded universe that's my wish, but oh well. Now the controls are a little tough if you played this for the first time, and it will take getting used to. But there is a mouse and even controller support, which is a huge plus. 
You don't see it very often with these older PC games, but they really optimized this game so well to fit with any different type of controller. And the controls just work so well with the controller and the keyboard and mouse. So, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire gets A. It's a great game, great value for what you're getting. This was my first time really playing the game, really sitting down and playing the game the whole way through. And it's a lot of fun, man. If you've seen my Twitch live stream, you know how much fun I had with the game. It's phenomenal. It's a really great game. Great value. You're going to get your money's worth with this game. Plus having the badass Dash Rendar, having the great cutscenes. Oh, this game is great. It's fan fantastic. So next up is Star Wars Bounty Hunter. That game is going to take me some more time compared to Shadows of the Empire because I have to play it the whole way through. I think it takes about 10-12 hours to beat, so I'll keep you guys updated on how that review goes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to please like and comment down below. Tell me what you think of Shadows of the Empire and gush over it all you want in the comment section. That's what the comment section is for. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel Django Fett, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.